Yo, it's Poppin' Play Boys. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, man, we're gonna be doing. Ah, why can I not speak today? We're gonna be. Yours, Pop and Playboys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a quick little rundown on Dusty. Um, I noticed in a lot of my videos, well, a lot of my recent videos since being turbo, a lot of you guys ask for like model lists and like stuff that I've been done to it. Even in my DMs, people ask me, Hey, bro, what's your model list? So, um, this is gonna make a quick video uh, just to get everything out so you guys can know what's done to the car. I don't like hiding stuff from you guys. So, yeah, I'm gonna tell you guys every single thing that I've done to this car so far. And, uh, yeah, man, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Now, Dusty is pretty dirty. Um, it rained all last weekend. So, yeah, this car is filthy right now. It might not look filthy on the camera, but trust me, in person, the car is really, really dirty. It needs a nice little bath. But yeah, you guys can see how dirty it is. So I'm gonna try not to get too close to the car because I don't, I don't want you guys to think I don't care about Dusty. But yeah, she's just really dirty. Florida just been raining like really, really badly. All right, so how I'm gonna do this? I'm gonna start with the exterior of the car since nothing much has really changed. Um, yeah, nothing much has changed from the last time I did a Marlis video. So yeah, let's start it off with the lip. Now I get a lot of questions about this lip and where it's from. As you guys can see, it's pretty clapped right now. I really need to get it repainted or repainted myself. I just haven't found the time to do it. But yeah, it's clapped. Um, I bought that lip off of South SouthCalAccessories.com, I believe. That, I believe that's what they're called. It's a GT style lip, I think. I can't really remember off the top of my head. But don't kill me if I if I'm wrong. But I, I think it's a GT style lip. Um, after that. I do have carbon fiber badges front and rear. I made a whole install video on this on how terrible it is because to be honest to be honest with you guys, they are pretty terrible. There's a lot of bubbles in it. As you can see, I don't know what these white stuff are, but every time I wash my car and dry it, these white stuff pop up on it. Even if I polish it, it still pops up. So yeah, um, I bought those badges off of Etsy for 25 bucks or no, I don't even think it's 25 bucks. I think it's like $50 or something like that. I'm gonna put the link if I remember, <laughs> I'll put the link right here so you guys can see it. But yeah, it was pretty cheap. And uh, I guess this is what happens when you cheap out on badges. But whatever. Next thing on the list is this headlight. Uh, this is a social performance headlight. I don't know if he still makes these headlights, but I know there's somebody else that's in local in South Florida that does it. I honestly just don't remember the name. Uh, he's known for making like headlights like these for Supras and GTRs and stuff. But yeah. If you guys are looking for this headlight, Social Performance. Try to hit him up. They uh they are in uh, Puerto Rico, so he probably take a while to respond or not respond not respond to you at all. I've been getting a lot of messages saying, "Hey, I, I DM Social Performance, but he never hit me back." <laughs> I can't help you with that, you guys. I honestly wish I could have him DM everybody back, but that's not my job. I can't do that. I DM him buy this headlight from him. I bought it from one of my boys that's up in Tampa. Shout out to him. Um, he gave me a good deal on his light and uh, yeah, that's the only reason why I have it. This right here usually comes in silver. I got it wrapped in black. I need to get it rewrapped again because it's chipping. But yeah, that's wrapped in black as well as these, the fog light bezels, whatever you call them. Those are wrapped in black as well. Um, now I want to get to the tires and, tires and wheels. These are the same wheels from my last setup. Um, these are 17 by 9 plus 35 plus 35 plus 38 offset. These are Alhans AH06s. Uh, right now, I got a Achilles Accelera. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I got a 60, I got a 651 Sports. Uh, basically, like a like a like a street radio, I guess you could say. Um, it hooks pretty well, no lie. I do have maximum PSI in it, so I do spin, but if I was to air it out a little bit. You know, do a pull, they grip up pretty nice. Um, these are 245 40 17s as well. So, yeah, they're pretty meaty up front. Got the same in the back, same setup. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I love these tires. They're really good. A little bit scary in the rain, but 
you know, you're not even supposed to be driving fast in the front wheel drive car in the rain. If you're doing that, you're just acting a hydroplane. Next is my side skirts. These are, I believe, Mugen side skirts or Molder side skirts or something like that. I'll see if I can put the picture of what they're actually called. But yeah, um, bought these years ago for dirt cheap, painted already. I paid $75 for these painted. And yeah, bro, biggest biggest come up I ever came up on because I see a lot of people get these for 200 and then they spare, spare them themselves for another another two hundred dollars, and yeah, I I got them already blue for seventy five dollars, and they fit perfect. Also, uh, this is an eBay carbon fiber, uh, I guess you could say side skirt, side skirt lip. I don't know, bro, but yeah, I my girlfriend bought that for me. I think she paid like a hundred dollars for that, but yeah, it's freight carbon fiber. Looks good when it's wet, looks ugly when it's not, but I need something to offset just all the blue. I need some black underneath and it did the job. It looks really nice in my eyes. Next thing on the list is these little, uh, I guess you call them canards or, uh, or splats, whatever you want to call them. But I bought these on eBay for 25 bucks, painted them black. They're originally like an ugly fake carbon fiber, painted them black and just mounted them on. Been on the car for a couple years now. And they look freaking amazing. I might change them up. I might take them off and get something else because as you guys can see, it's starting to crack and fade and yeah, it's just looking really bad on this side. So yeah, I'm thinking about switching it up, getting something else for, you know, dirt cheap again and uh, probably painting it or just leaving it how it originally came. Now that's really it for the exterior. I, oh, actually, no, I forgot something about, I forgot about two things. Um, I do have a, no, three things. I do have a carbon fiber roof lip, which is pretty clapped, like super, super clapped. I need to get a new one. They cost $200, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. And then I have a car use design, car use, I guess, car use, car, cars us. I don't know, bruh. But yeah, I got one of these gurney flaps, traded my old password JDM with my boy Don, um, Don FB6, go follow him, show him some love. But yeah, uh, I love this flap. This flap is actually like pretty fire. One of my favorite things on this car. It just makes the rear look really, really aggressive. I don't care what anybody say, but it makes it look fire in my eyes. Next thing on the list is my stock tail lights with vinyl temp. A lot of people think they're aftermarket. No, they're stock with just some cheap vinyl temp tent that I bought off of JXPF, something like that, some crazy name. And uh, these were 50, about 50 bucks or 25 bucks. And then yeah, all you gotta do is get some heat on it and just mold it on, and that's really it. I had some heat and some water and a squingy. You know, did one of those. Whoa, pause. That looks so weird. Oh my gosh. And uh, I guess you could call this exterior thing, even though it's for the motor. I got a Tesudo exhaust, which I really need to get another one because this one, like, I don't know what happened to it. I think I blew the wells off because uh, sometimes it sounds raspy as hell, and other days it sounds really, really good. Oh, as well, I did wrap my roof black. I guess that's the newest uh, thing I did to the exterior of the car. I think it was basically the same way for like the past nine to 10 months. But yeah, I did wrap my roof. Well, I didn't. SNS Visuals did and he killed it. Looks freaking good. Especially when the car is washed and it's like chilling in the sun. The black just hits really, really, really good. All right, so for the interior of the car, it's pretty basic. I don't really have too much stuff done to it. If you guys stay up to date with my videos, you guys already know about these gauge pods that I have installed in my AC vents. I uh, bought them off of SC for I think $35 and then I bought the other one for $25 since I already bought one. You can buy both for $50 which is a pretty good deal. If you do have two gauges that you need to wire up and you don't want to have a gauge pod going on your uh, airbag thing or you just want to have a clean setup like I do. But yeah, I have installed videos on both of these and uh, they're, both, they're both pretty easy. Uh, for the interior of the car, I do have a glow shift boost gauge and an ethanol gauge to read my ethanol content. I have a hybrid racing shifter with uh, the hybrid racing, I forgot what this is actually called, but it's one of the hybrid racing uh, shift knobs. I actually love this shift knob a lot. And as you guys can see, I drive my car a lot because that is dirty. If the camera focus, uh, focuses on it, which I'm pretty sure is not, but yeah, I need to clean up this car. I need to do like a full like detail or actually have somebody else do it for me who is actually you know trained to do this type of stuff because I feel like I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna still miss on like you know very simple things like this been in my car since I had this car 
And I don't know why I keep it here. I honestly need to just throw it out. But yeah. Along with the gauges and the pods, I do have uh, LED lighting that I installed, LED strips. Um, one's inside a shifter column, and then the other one is in, under my feet, and then the other one is on the passenger side. I used to keep it in the back, I used to have two in the back, but I realized, I'm like, yo, I don't really have anybody in the back, like the back seats. So, I took both of them, both the back ones, and I put it right here, right next to my shifter. So, when I'm driving, my shifter is glowing. It's pretty cool. I really like it. I also upgraded my interior lighting because the stock like lights are really really trash. I did it for the back as well along as the trunk but you guys can see that because you know the trunk's not open. Uh, also a lot of people ask me about this mount. Uh, this phone mount I bought off of Amazon. It's pretty damn cheap. I think I still got the box somewhere in here. Oh yeah still here. So if you guys wanted to know what, uh, what uh, phone holder I'm using is this right here google that or amazon it and it should pop up it's pretty cheap um see if i give you guys a part number why did i tap the box like it was the camera but yeah there goes a part number get that down and uh yeah that's the amount i'm using it's double-sided tape so you just stick it down to wherever you want i have mine right here i put my phone right here and i place it down a little bit so like the mount could like you know get wedged into the into the dash and uh, it holds my phone pretty well not the best but for the pulls I be doing it holds it pretty well I almost forgot about one big old thing in my car my steering wheel uh, my steering wheel is wrapped I kind of forgot the company's name because I did it like two three years ago and uh, spent eight hours of my eight hours of my life doing this and it was terrible and I will never do it again but yeah I love it it used to be suede now it's matte yeah it's matte boy it used to be sweet. It used to be like, dang, I don't even got a part to show you on the steering wheel anymore. Oh, there we go. It used to be like that. Now it's like this. I'm just me driving and hand grease and all that nasty stuff. I really need to get this cleaned. So as you guys know, I am turboed. Uh, Dusty been turbo for probably two months now. Two months? No, since February. So February, Jan January, February, March, April, May, June. So about four or five months, uh, Dusty's been turbo turboed for. And I have run into zero issues. Only thing I could say that was an issue for me was me blowing up my damn water mount, my aftermarket water mount to be in fact. Um, yeah, that was terrible. That was terrifying actually. I thought I was gonna, I don't know. I thought something, I thought my transmission blew up but it was the water mount, luckily. So this is a stock K24Z7, the stock motor that comes with a knife gen. And I have a stock trans and I'm boosted. So if you guys are scared that your trans is gonna blow up, it's not, just don't, you know, full send it too much. Um, the car makes 390 and 304, 304 torque, so it's not that much torque to blow up these trans. Um, I hear stories about these trans going out around 350 torque, so I'm not even near that, so I'm not really, you know, too scared. And I do plan on upping the power so I can just break that four, that 400 mark. I would love to be like 410, 415, 405, I don't care, just want to break the 400 mark and uh, still be on stock trans because I don't necessarily have the money. I have the money, but I don't want to spend the money on the trans. So yeah. So I'm just gonna get all the obvious stuff out the way uh, to make this quick. I do have a Hasport motor mount. If you guys haven't watched my recent video, I didn't do a, I didn't do an install video on this. I just threw it on because there was no point in me doing one. Um, but if you did watch my video where my other mount blew up, this is what I replaced it to. The mount I had in before was innovative. I'm not here to bash innovative, but I don't know what happened, bro. I did exactly what you guys wanted me to do. I installed it properly, and I I don't know. The bolt just got loose and blew up, and it ripped up. It ripped my mount. It bent the bracket. It destroyed my serpentine belt and my pulley. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying for you guys not to get innovative, but that's just my experience on it. It blew up. I do have an innovative trans mount, by the way. Um, I am planning on swapping that out for a Hasport, not because the mount's not good. I just want to swap it out because I believe Hasport is like very, very similar to OEM, and uh, the innovative one is not similar to it at all. It kind of blocks the bolt that I use to fill up my transmission when I do change the oil. So that's the one thing I didn't like. Now when I gotta change my oil for my trans, I gotta jack up the car and feed a whole funnel crap PVC piping type of craziness just to get some oil in it when I used to just pop off that boat and just pour the oil. 
I know this probably caught your guys' eye, but yeah, I do have a cash can that's not routed to anything anymore. Since I'm using my uh, my intake manifold as my vacuum source for my vacuum block, which is on my ECU cover, I guess you, I bet you guys didn't even see that, huh? Pretty nice. But uh, yeah, I am planning on getting the the oil cap that turns into uh, what's it called? A I guess you could say I'm having such a brain fart right now, but that I guess that turns into a cash can. So yeah, that's my plan. I also do have a new valve cover because you guys can see this one is currently clapped. And I'm thinking I'm gonna sell it, or I might just keep it up since that's the first uh, first valve cover that I ever painted. And who knows, when I get a built motor, I might throw that on top. So when the motor does get swapped in, it could get hit with anything and damage the valve cover and all. Cause yeah, I don't want to put a new valve. I don't. I wouldn't. I would hate to put a valve cover on a brand new painted valve cover and it get knocked and nicked while putting a new motor in. So I'd rather have a old stock ones still here just in case you know that day comes when i do build this motor because that's my goal so i got most of the big things out as you guys can see um now we're gonna go to the supporting monster the turbo kit oh by the way i'm on the max speed turbo kit with a pulsar gtx 3576 what's supporting that turbo is alpha ejection clinic 1300 cc injectors that's currently on all e85 i do have a flex fuel kit as well but i'm like 25 not 25% I'm 95% of the time running straight E uh, when I'm in a pickle and I need to you know get somewhere real fast I'll go get some 93 but most of the time this car is always on E85 now the car did run out of fuel um, I am maxing out these injectors but I do have my fuel return at the house I just need to find a time to get it installed and uh, yeah I'll be up in the booth you know with 1300 CC injectors and a fuel return, I should be at low, probably 40s of uh, maximum duty cycle. Right now I'm around like 95. And if I pump like a really, really good E85, like E77, E78, it basically maxes out, it maxes out to 100. So yeah, man, um, right now I'm at like E74 and the ejectors are pretty good. It's like the low 90s or mid 90s. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's not, really, not where I want it to be, but it's not really, you know, too scary to drive on it like that so for my shifter assembly well that's the shifter assembly my shifter cables i do have a cuties uh what's it called shifter bushings if you guys can see that there goes one right there and the other one should be right here um i can't really tell you the difference over stock because once i got this car my girlfriend bought those for me and i installed them like the day after so i didn't really get too much time driving with stock bushings but uh a lot of people say it you know it helps with you know just the stiffness of the car well the stiffness of you know the transmission and shifter along with the bushings i do have uh hybrid racing dn springs best 17 dollars i ever spent uh, if you like your car to feel notchy when you're shifting get those springs super super easy to install if you're on like if you're pretty much stock it's pretty easy but for me if i was to install those now i would have to do like a whole bunch of craziness but yeah they're pretty good uh, i have a video on that too if you guys are going to watch it uh just go on my channel I can't really link where it's at, but it's definitely in the channel. The car is on Rev9 coils. Now, Dusty is tuned by Yost Tuned. If you guys are interested on in getting a tune by him, head to his Instagram and click that link in his bio. It takes you right to his website and you can schedule a tune with him. Oh, one thing I forgot to talk about when I was talking about my fuel system is that I am on a D Swords 65C fuel pump. Um, I don't know the limits of that. Yost should be the one to tell me, but that's already getting swapped out when I do my fuel return because I have a Walboro, 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 Walboro? I have a bigger fuel pump that's not the Hellcat fuel pump but the level before it. I got the Walboro 450 and that should flow enough fuel for me to make 800, 900 I believe. So, well, I'm not going to say that but it should be enough for me to make six if I wanted to make six, which I'm not going to. But I believe that's it. I think I covered everything about Dusty. If I didn't, I'll definitely leave it in the comments below. But honestly, I think I covered everything. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Follow your boy on Instagram at underscore Gata Soda. By the way, I do have a merch site where I do have clothes for sale and stickers and stuff like that. Um, it's www.zubigarage.com. Support the channel, support Dusty, so I can help support y'all. But yeah, man, your boy's out. Peace.